This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live. Brought to you by the North Law Firm for car accidents and negligent security cases. Call Joe at 239-337-1191. And by Lee Health. Southwest Florida, you are looking live here at the Stars Complex. Lee Pitts Live is here to cover the Unity in the Community basketball, celebrity basketball game here that's bringing in a lot of NFL football players here at the Stars Complex in Fort Myers, put on by Jay Styles of Star 95 FM, the People Station, and the Stars Complex. The NFL is out here. Speaking of the NFL, Here's a guy that I have to run around the galaxy. No, no. The whole no. galaxy people no, to get an interview man. with Ernest Graham. <laughs> uh, uh, Florida Gator of Florida Gators fame running back, Tampa Bay Buccaneers fame running back, high school coach now famed. And what's the name of the high school you went to, Ernest? The high school I went to was uh, Mariner High School. You're not coaching yeah. there, though, right? No, no, Did coaching at North Fort Myers. Okay, high would it be extra pressure if you were coaching at your own high school? No, nah, it wouldn't be extra pressure, actually, man. I think it's a lot of pressure where I'm at right now. Okay. <laughs> you said North Fort Myers? North Fort Myers, yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you do – okay, let's back up. We don't get Ernest Graham every day. <laughs> you guys might see I'm real comfortable with Ernest because I interviewed Ernest when he was in uh, maybe elementary school or middle school before he went on to become famous. Did. <laughs> and uh, so we go way back. Yeah. I got to pull out some of that old video, man. <laughs> Ernest, man, you maintain that same personality – since you were a little kid. Appreciate it. Tell me what in your household, I know uh, something went on, some adults uh, <laughs> taught you that. Yeah, my, my mom, man, she always, you know, taught me how to go about, you know, my business, you know, in regards to staying humble, you know, in regards to letting your work speak for itself. Uh, you know, so I'm one that's, I'm somebody that's always busy, you know, and when you're working hard, you know, work is working hard, and what you get from that type of work is its own reward. So, you know, for me, it was never about talking. I always felt like, you know, talk was cheap. But, you know, if you were in, in indeed doing good work, that it, it would show for itself. So, mm -hmm. uh, my mom, my mom led by example. I try to lead by example, and I and I and I try to just build value in regards to everything that I that I that I do. Now, you went off and became successful. Mm -hmm. You are living back here in your yes. hometown. You mm -hmm. live in Fort Myers now, huh? Yes, I do. Tell us mm -hmm. about that. What what inspired you to actually come back home? Is this something you always had a dream to do? Oh uh, yeah, I always had a dream to. I always just thought it was. I know all the kids use the word all the time, real. But you know, I, I just thought it was the real thing to do. Is that you know you have a set of ex set of experience when you grow up. You know a place intimately, and you try to come back and bring that valuable information in regards to how you navigate a place. You know how you go from A to A to B or A to Z and be successful. Um, and my uncles, my uncles and my family were a great, uh, you know, a great role models for me. So my uncle, uh, Doc Carter, uh, you know, who was who, yeah, who ran was, the pharmacy. Yeah, my uncle right. Doc, Doc and Carter. His, and his son, uh, yeah, and, Edward, uh, and, my, and my uncle Frederick Carter. Yeah. He was a longtime educator. Uh -huh. um, he grew up here in the community. My, my my first cousin Edwin Carter. He's a principal now at Pelican. Edwin had a little basketball game back in the no day. No question, Edwin. Man. I'm shouting you out, yeah, man. I used to kill you at the wide over. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, they were all community guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to see my uncle Doc Carter. I used to see him walk just walk the streets of really Fort Myers, checking on everybody. You really? know, doing yeah, man. He was he was I he got was, he was awesome. Too. He was awesome. So. Um, that's where I got that from. I, I just used to see them doing that and I always aspired to, to be that. if I'm that. not mistaken, Doc Carter was the first black pharmacist in the area. That's right. I got to interview him way back in the that's 90s. Right. That's right. Well, the, 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 the fun that I've had with this television show. Mm -hmm. the, um, uh, I'm still getting more on you before we get into why mm -hmm. you're here today. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, when you were in, I think when I, when I interviewed you in high school, at that time you were already a prodigy. I mean, you were like one of the top running backs in the state and all this other stuff. All these other trappings, all all state, maybe all American at the time. You were still grounded. Did you envision at that time, or were, or were you one of those people saying, "Hey, you you know, I can't. There's no guarantee that I'm gonna become an NFL player." How how were you thinking as a youngster at the time? I knew there was no guarantee. I didn't mm -hmm. think too far ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think you can think too far ahead and really pay the kind of attention you need to pay to your craft. You know, so I was always, you know, when it came to basketball, baseball, 
football. I was always really absorbed in those things, just really trying to be the best. I played on a lot of different travel teams. I always took my education seriously and all those things. But I don't think you can really think that far ahead, you mm -hmm. know, because there is, you know, you have to first of all be the best amongst the competition that you're around. And then once you go to those levels, you know, you pick up things and you, then you, you know, then that allows you to have success. But I always try to keep one foot forward, man, and, and take, take advantage of what's in front of me. How did you make the decision? Because I remember the first time you came on my television show, you were a little baseball player, a little league right. baseball oh, yeah. oh, yeah. over there in the Michigan Housing Project. Uh -huh. I didn't remember it, but you remembered you had come earlier. Uh -huh. Then you came back as a football player. No when question. did you decide that you were going to, which sport you were going to focus on? Well, I, I initially went to play both sports at the University of Florida. Um, when I was graduating high school, I had a choice between actually going, you know, going to pursue my education and, and, and being a student soon after the University of Florida and going in the first round of the baseball draft. Okay. Um, that year, uh, the Philadelphia Phillies had two picks in the first round. Well, you learn new stuff here <laughs> on defense line. Yeah, and they, uh, and they wanted to take me with their second pick in the first round, but I would have had to give up uh, football wow. entirely. So I decided not to and to go to the uh, University of Florida. You know, I had a deal to play football there. Coach Spurrier just thought it was best that I didn't. I mean, baseball. Right. I, 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 he, he thought it, I, that I didn't. I shouldn't. So I didn't. I listened to him and didn't. I wish I would have kept going somewhat, but it turned out all right. So now, I know, I know, I know you were running back in, in college and in the pros, mm -hmm. but in, in baseball, what, what position you played? I, was, I played all the outfield positions. I pitched a lot, you know, growing up, but I was mostly an a, a out, a outfielder. Now, all in high school positions. football, you played defense as well. I, I played linebacker, linebacker and running back. Yep. Now, yep. now, you were better running back than a linebacker. Some people say I was a better <laughs> linebacker in high school, you though. You know, Yeah, I could hit. I was running to hit, Did man. You prefer hitting or not hit? Uh, I, being... pre I prefer hitting, yeah. you know, to be honest with you. But uh, I ended up being a pretty good pretty good running back. And, you know, we had some really good years in basketball uh -huh. there, too. So I had some chances in all three sports. Oh, you had some basketball games too. I had some. I had some you don't know this, but I just see well. you running around with Teddy Dupay. Yeah, in high man. School. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know if you and Teddy, Teddy came on my show together, to, uh, but yeah. I saw y'all later on together. But I just oh. see you running around with Teddy Dupay, no but I didn't know yeah. you had a basketball game. Yeah, no question, man. I, I can play a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah. Now let's go to lo uh, local high school football. Uh -huh. um, I think the last article I read that your high school football team was doing pretty good. Yeah, we did pretty well last year. We were um, undefeated in the regular season. We ended wow. up losing in the second round of playoffs. But, I mean, it was the first time that we went um, went undefeated in 23 years. Uh, first time team had been in the playoffs in, like, 10 years. Uh, I mean, it's been a lot of work, but, we, you know, last year it all came together. Now, you took control of that team about three years ago? Uh, I, I, last year was my fourth year. And you tr now you undefeated? Yeah, we okay, did it last take year. Take me through uh -huh. your season one, season yeah. two, season three. Tell me about the yeah, so we Yeah, so we were five and five our first two years. Following season, we were seven and three, and then we were uh, last year we were eight and zero technically because we lost two games due to the hurricane. But I, we would have won those games, so okay. so we ended up uh, you know we ended up going undefeated in the regular season. But I, it was it was a process. I didn't have any experience before I became a, right. a high school football coach, and, and uh, you know you're leading young men. You know you're you know every single day you're counseling them, mentoring them, and then you're trying to also be competitive out on the football field. It was a lot of work, but it was it's, it's been a lot of fun. What's the prospects for a 2018-19 season? Got a really good team coming back. Um, you know, I, I think the teams, uh, you know, we play in a tough district. We play in a tough district, I think, in all three counties. But, you know, we have a really, a really good chance of, of winning our district again. Now, do the students, I know they can read about you, but do they know of your legend? Yeah, they, they do know. <laughs> they do know. And, and, and it gives you a lot of credibility once it comes to really teaching the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when a lot of the coaches come around from different schools, you know, they'll talk to them about, you know, mostly the most important thing to me is that they talk, you know, about how I, you know, how I was kind of as a professional, as a, you know, a, a collegiate athlete. And that's important to me because it says to the kids that, you know, I, I, I walk what I talk, you know. Um, my mom, again, another thing that my mom, mom told me, it gives you credibility with the kids. I want to go back to you in baseball when you had an opportunity to go into uh, I guess it'd be triple A or double A or minor uh -huh. leagues, all that, mm -hmm. right out of high school, mm -hmm. uh, and, and 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 start getting paid. You weren't going to get paid big time till you get to the bigs, but right. you 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 could take your skills mm -hmm. straight from high school and mm -hmm. start earning money. What's your thoughts right now about, in general, we hear it in baseball, basketball, right. uh, mm -hmm. about players being able to go straight from high school to the pros. What's mm. what's your thoughts about that? I think it's great. I think in, re in regards to basketball, I think you're good enough. I mean, if you are good enough right now to be able to go and make a living, you need to be afforded the opportunity to do that. 
Um, I think it's the same thing with, I think there's different ways that you can struggle, I mean, st structure uh, collegiate athletes actually being compensated. You know, I, I kind of believe in, you know, maybe something upon graduation, something that's merit-based, you know, but collegiate athletes do help, you know, uh, do help conferences and do help schools make un untold millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, gr granted, the, you know, getting a, a free education, which is not free, but getting an education, um, it definitely is, it has a lot of value, but these guys are producing a lot more. A lot of them are, are contributing to jersey sales, all these different things. Um, I, I also, right now, I'm coaching baseball as well, so I'm also coaching out at uh, Dunbar Little League. Um, and I, I plan to help build up the league and also do a number of travel teams because I think basketball, baseball around here has obviously been on the decline. But I think there's a lot of untapped potential in, in regards to baseball in the community. So uh, that's one thing I want to help bring back to the forefront. I'm glad you raised baseball. You know, I didn't grow up in this area, but you know, I'm a pretty well-known athlete, mm -hmm. swimming, tennis, uh, yeah. football, basketball. Yeah. But, but I didn't play baseball growing up. Right. It was popular at the time in the 70s in my neighborhood. Right. Mm -hmm. All the cats, Ernest, that played baseball, mm -hmm. they played all the other sports well. Yes, no now, question. People who played other sports didn't necessarily play baseball well. No, no. But the cats who played baseball, they were yep. good at basketball, yep. tennis, swimming, no football. Question. Why is that? Hand eye coordination. Hand eye stuff? coordination, and it's the ultimate one of the ultimate skill sports. Uh, soccer is one too, but it's one of the ultimate skill sports in regards to you have to fail all the time. You know, so you have to really perfect your craft in regards to hitting, in regards to fielding, you know, in regards to catching the ball. So you learn in baseball how to perfect the craft. So you learn the process of you know, how do I technically get really good at something? So right. when it came to shooting a basketball, technique wasn't, that wasn't right. that difficult of a task compared right. to hitting the baseball. Same thing running back, just instinct. Same thing, you know what I mean? Same thing with throwing the ball as a quarterback. You know, same thing with, you know, certain positions. So baseball is really technical, it's really analytical, and it's a lot about situations. Mm -hmm. You know, so guys in baseball do have kind of And then you're always thinking, stuff. always thinking. Always thinking. <laughs> okay. Yep. The, um... Today they had a football clinic this yes. morning. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of NFL players came out, Jalen uh, Watkins mm -hmm. and some others uh, came out this morning. Were you right. out there this morning? I was not out there this morning, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the whole, and now we have a uh, basketball, basketball game uh, uh, with uh, NFL players playing in it as well as some community leaders. Uh, these type of events, mm -hmm. you saw those as a child. Yes, yes I did. Who, who came back to the community when you were a kid and you said, man, I can't believe I'm looking at Dion or whoever Yeah, Dion, Dion did. Um, all those guys were around, like Richard Fain was around, you know, Warren Williams. I knew, you know, saw him around his family. Um, it was a number of guys that came back. Walt Wesley. You know, mm -hmm. Walt Wesley is one of the, you know, you know, the biggest, you know, leaders here in the community. Um, I, more, more kids need to, you know, obviously they see him walking around seven foot tall, but uh, more kids need to, you know, look him up and, and understand what he did uh, as a collegiate athlete and what he did as far as his education is concerned. But those are always guys that were around that I always saw that I wanted to kind of emulate and, 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 again, do what they did in regards to, you know, coming back and helping out the community. How important is it? these types of things when you come back and give back to the community they're 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 huge you know so for kids to see you you know kids to get immediate inspiration um you know in regards to okay that's somebody who came from the same situation i did and was able you know to to play at the highest level was able to educate himself and able to be a success it's huge you know what i mean so it, it's something that you can't put a a, a price amount on or a, a real value on but it's, it's big for these kids but those of you who join us late on radio mm -hmm. we're talking to nfl great ernest graham product of Fort Myers Dunbar community, uh, mm -hmm. outstanding running back with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the uh, Florida Gators. Uh, Ernest D, um, I, I can tell that you are pushing at academics at school mm -hmm. just from talking to you right now. Mm -hmm. how, how are students receptive to that? Is it a different type of student now mm -hmm. than when you were coming along or you, it, you just have to take them step each I think, time? I think, just the, I think the possibilities are different. I mean, I just noticed, you know, kids have a, a, a they can accelerate, you know, their, their, you know, academics right now, meaning my, my daughter's in high school, at ninth grader, you know, but she's already on path to, you know, to, um, to take classes at FSW and FGCU. I mean, I've had kids on my football team who are already, you know, two years out of, they go into, they go into college with credit 
for two years already, and they're done within two years. You know, so there's a lot of possibilities there. I know they have virtual school, all these different things. Kids are able to learn more online. You know, so it's not as traditional, you know, as it was when we were in school. There's not as much grunt work in regards to being in the books. You still have to do it. But there's also so many other aids um, that kids should be aware of. You know what I mean? So it's less of an excuse, which is great. You know, I try to just really tell the kids, you guys have less of an excuse because every every turn, whether it's in your phone or whether you're at home on a computer, you have something that you can get information from and actually become a better student and learn your craft. So that was one of the big things that I just try to get with them on is just the awareness that they have a number of tools to be able to succeed. Good. I noticed you brought your kids out here today. Why was that? Uh, have to, man. I try, I try to bring them and keep them involved in the community. Uh, my son actually plays for, my, uh, base, for the baseball team at uh, Dunbar Little League. And, and it's, it's, it's an important event. I mean, you look around, you see guys like Joseph Norris, Jay Styles, you know, different people who are doing a lot in the community, uh, you know, here at the event. And I'm just another – how I always feel, I'm just another guy. Yeah, you act I'm like just it, another man. guy here, man, <laughs> and, uh, and I just enjoy being around. What are you thinking now when you look at uh, – uh, the new generation that has gone on now and made it into the NFL, the Sammy Watkinses of the uh -huh. world, the Jalen Watkinses, you 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 saw them come up, right? Man, they're awesome. First of all, those guys are fantastic <laughs> athletes. Um, I, I talked to Jalen, you know, quite a bit. And, again, those are guys that are, you know, the younger generation. Um, you know, it's like chains in the link, you know what I mean? It's like links in the chain, excuse me, um, in regards to guys from my generation, guys are older than me, like Dion, and you got the Sammy Watkins, you know, and, and Jalen Watkins right now, and then you've got a number of kids here in high school. You know, they're all important. They're all important to the community. So uh, to be able to be here and see those guys and all that stuff is, is great. How is it that a little small town like Fort Myers uh -huh. can produce so many great athletes, particularly in track and field and football? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> I mean, in the water, man. I came man. from a big city, man. We rarely ever had an NFL yeah. player come it's out of Birmingham. Yeah. from Birmingham, man. Yeah. Bro, tie. It's in the water, man. I mean, guys around here can, you know, one is just our speed and um, our ability is it's definitely on a, sec a different level. I tell people all the time, you know, Deion Sanders changed the cornerback position. You know, Javon Curse changed, you know, for the most part, defensive right, end position. Right, they're not so just average football No, players. they're not average guys that they come, come from, from around area, here. Right. You know, Sammy Watkins is unbelievable. You mm -hmm. know, he's one of the most dynamic, explosive players in the NFL. And so, so humble. No, no question, you know. So it's just, it's, it's in the water. It's one of those it's things amazing. you can't explain, man. But, <laughs> you know, pound for pound, there's a lot of really good players that come from this area. So, you know, you have to take your hat off to what's going on down here. Okay. Well, Ernest, I'm looking forward to bringing my television show out to your school, uh -huh. maybe covering some of your summer practices. Yeah, that would be great. We need to connect on that and uh, just kind of see what you're doing and mm -hmm. kind of set up out there and, and yeah. continue because uh, we're so proud of you being able to be successful in all fields of endeavors that you uh, have been coming out of this community. We bump into each other every now and then. Oh, yeah, no question. So <laughs> we're about to see Ernest have to grab it. Hopefully I have my camera there, man. I appreciate being on, man. I, I love what you do. All right, you're cool cat, man. All right. This has been Ernest Graham, uh, football legend, uh, here for the uh, um, uh, Unity in the Community basketball game. I don't think you're going to suit up, though. No, I'm not suiting up. No, uh, I'm not yeah, suiting yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's still like he could go out there and write yeah, some yeah, stuff. Man. But you, you are essentially a halfback slash fullback. It's halfback slash fullback, yes. Because the fullback is kind of fading away, right? Yeah, it pretty much is. So that's why they kind of moved towards having guys who could play both positions. Okay. And I, you I got that money before guys. the end, though. I did. I'm going to let you go, Ernest. Lee Pitts Live is a Lee Pitts Enterprise production.